Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 14 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model your very own screwdriver, which of course could be 3D printed and actually used. We'll take a look at how to create components driven off of previous components, and we'll cover the three-point arc sketch feature. We're going to start off by modeling the handle of the screwdriver as one component, and then we'll create a second component for the shank of the screwdriver. To create a new component, I'll select New Component from the Assemble drop-down list, and I'll double check that Empty Component is selected. Before we hit OK, we'll follow rule number two of Fusion 360, which is to always name your bodies and components. I'll type in Handle for the name, Make sure Activate is selected so we can start working on the component right away. And I'll click OK in the New Component dialog box. Now let's start to create the handle by using the Cylinder tool from the Create drop-down list. After selecting Cylinder, I'll click on the front face, click on the center origin, drag out with my mouse, and then I'll type in 28 millimeters for the width. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and I'll click with my mouse to snap the circle in place. Then I'll make the length 100 millimeters and click OK to exit the cylinder feature. And before we do anything else, I'll rename the body cylinder by double clicking on it in the Fusion 360 browser, and I'll type out cylinder. I'll also click on the save icon type out slot head screwdriver for the name, and I'll click the blue save button. At this point, we could leave a basic cylinder shape for the handle, but it would work better and be more ergonomic if we cut some grooves in it. To do this, I'll look at the handle from the back side. Then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C for center circle, and I'll click on the back face of the handle. What I want to do here is draw a circle, extrude cut it, and then I'll pattern the cut feature around the handle. So I'll just click on the left side here at the edge of the handle where the center circle function will snap into place. And I'll make this circle six millimeters. Now I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E for extrude, and I'll extrude cut this 75 millimeters, and then I'll click OK to exit the extrude command. I'll activate the circular pattern feature located in the pattern folder under the create dropdown menu. You'll see that after we activate the pattern feature, we can select the pattern type. I'll select features as the pattern type, and then I'll select the extrude feature in the timeline below. For the axis, I'll select the center axis of our handle. And remember, if you ever can't select the axis here in the canvas because it's blocked by a body, you can select the axis in the Fusion 360 browser. Now we want this pattern to go all the way around the handle, so I'll make sure full is selected as the type, and then we'll set six for the quantity or the number of times to pattern. Looking at the model, we can see a faint preview of the pattern, but let's go ahead and click OK to see the results. Now one thing to note here, we could have used the sketch circular pattern and pattern the circle around before we extruded it, but I recommend using the pattern feature under the create dropdown list when possible, as it will perform much better in Fusion 360, especially when dealing with larger and more complex patterns and assemblies. Now the main reason is because the sketch tool is trying to render all of the geometry. Whereas if you look at the sketch of our pattern feature, it's simply rendering the one circle and the pattern feature is mimicking the extrude cut. At this point, I want to add a nice fillet or rounded edge to the back of the handle. I'll select the keyboard shortcut letter F to activate the fillet command. I'll select all six of the outside edges and I'll type in 10 millimeters for the distance. And of course, you can always type in more or less here. It really just depends on how much you want the back of the handle to be rounded over. We'll click OK to exit the fillet command. 
Now, I'll want to add a rounded divot to the front of the screwdriver so our thumb and forefinger have a nice and ergonomic place to rest. I'll right click on the YZ plane in the Fusion 360 browser and I'll select Create Sketch. We're going to use this center plane because we're going to draw an ellipse and then we'll revolve it around the cylinder. I'll select the ellipse tool from the sketch drop down list and I'll click just above the handle. Now I'm not sure exactly how far down I want to go, so I'll just go down 6 millimeters and I'll go to the right about 21 millimeters as we can always go back and change the dimensions. Now I'll select the revolve tool from the create drop down list. I'll select the ellipse we just created as the profile. And once again, we'll select the center axis of our handle. I'll make sure that my operation is set to cut and I'll click OK to see the results. Now looking at this divot, I may decide that I want to go down a bit further. If so, I'll double click on the sketch in the timeline to edit the ellipse and I'll change the height here to 8 millimeters. I'll hit stop sketch and take a look at the new results. Alrighty, so our handle is coming along nicely so far. The last thing we'll want to do is add some nice fillets or rounded edges to it. And then we'll proceed on to make the shank and tip of the screwdriver. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter F to activate the fillet command and I'll select the front circle of the screwdriver. I'll add a fillet of 1.5 millimeters and click OK. I'll hit letter F again, and I'll select these circles on each end of our divot, and I'll make these one millimeter and click OK. Lastly, we'll go ahead and add some nice rounded edges to our grips here. Clicking letter F to activate the fillet command, I'll select all six of the grip edges, and then I'll punch in two and a half millimeters for the fillet distance. I'll click OK, and then I'll right click on the edge here, and I'll select Repeat Fillet. I'll select all six of these corresponding edges. I'll make this edge rounded off with one millimeter, and then I'll click OK. Now the last thing we'll want to do with our handle before we're done with the component is to add a hole for our screwdriver's shank. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter H for hole and I'll click on the front face of our handle. Now the hole should have snapped to the center origin. You'll see if I drag this hole around, it will snap right into that center origin point. We want our hole to go halfway into the handle. In the hole dialog box, I'll make the length 50 millimeters. I'll make the width of the hole 7 millimeters, and then I'll change the drill point to flat. I'll click OK to exit the hole command, and we are now officially done with the handle of our screwdriver. At this point, we'll want to create a new component for the shank of our screwdriver. But first, we'll want to activate the top level component so our new component is nested within it. To activate it, I'll click on the little circle to the right of our file name. And once activated, I'll select New Component from the Assemble drop down list. And I'll rename this one Shank and click OK. Now you'll see in the Fusion 360 browser that the shank and handle components are nested underneath the screwdriver assembly. I'll make sure that the shank component is active before we start doing any work. And then I'll select the face of our hole. This way, if we change the hole dimension later on, our shank dimension will update accordingly, just like we talked about in day number 13. I'll hit letter E for extrude, and then I'll make the distance 150 millimeters and click OK. Now let's click on the circle next to the handle component to reactivate it, and we'll take a look at our hole size. I'll double click on the hole feature and change the width to 10 millimeters and then click OK. Then I'll reactivate our assembly and you'll see that the width of our shank did update accordingly as we expected. 
I'll go ahead and click undo to revert back to the original size. Now all we have to do is create our screwdriver tip, which we'll create a new component for. This time I'll use another method. I'll right click on the top assembly and select new component. I'll double click on the component in the browser and type in tip for the name. I'll select the front face of the shank and click letter E on the keyboard for extrude, and I'll punch in 10 millimeters for the distance. I'll make sure new body is selected, and then I'll click OK. And before I forget, I'll find the body in the browser and rename it to slot head tip. Now we're going to create the slot or flathead tip by cutting at the cylinder from the side. I'll right click on the YZ plane and select Create Sketch. Then I'll activate the three point arc from the Sketch drop down list. For the first point, I'll select the front edge here where it snaps in place. I'll select the top line where it snaps in place. And then I'm just going to put the third point where it creates that nice arc of the flathead. Now at this point, we'll want to fully define our sketch so we don't mess it up if we change dimensions in any of our other components. I'll hit letter D to activate the dimension tool. I'll click on the end of the three point arc here. I'll click on the center origin of our tip and I'll make this 0.5 millimeters and then hit the escape key to exit. Now you may have noticed that the other endpoint moved down. So I'll select this endpoint of the arc, and holding down shift, I'll select the corner of the cylinder. Now I'll click on the horizontal constraint icon. This way, it's always in line with the thickness of the tip, even if we change our dimensions. Now in order to extrude cut the shape, we'll have to close off our profile. So we can hit letter L for line, and then draw a horizontal line, and we can also draw a vertical line connecting the endpoints. Once again, before we cut this, we'll also want to make sure that all of our lines are black, indicating that they are fully constrained. Using D on the keyboard for dimension, I'll select the horizontal line and I'll make this 9 millimeters. Then you'll notice that the arc is still blue because we can dimension the radius of it. So we'll click on the arc and then hit enter. And you'll see after that, our profile is fully constrained as it has black lines all the way around. I'll hit letter E for extrude, select the profile, and I'll change the direction here to two sides. We'll need to change the operation to cut, and for the extent of each side, we'll select all. Now the reason we're selecting all is again for the purposes of our dimensions. If we decided to make this shaft thicker, then our cut here will update accordingly, and we won't have to go back and manually edit this extrude feature. I'll click OK to exit the extrude command, and now we'll want to select Mirror from the Create menu. We'll change the pattern type to Features, and we'll select the extrude in the timeline. For the midplane, I'll select the XZ plane in the browser, and then I'll click OK to take a look at the results. Now we're essentially done with our slot head screwdriver. We can reactivate the top level component to take a look at it. And of course, we can always select a component, hit letter A for appearances, and we can drag and drop the appearances onto each component. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or any Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.